All right, open your science textbook up to page 188. If you don't have it open now, please get your science book out, open up and follow along. You'll see the picture I chose is just a picture of some solar panels and some um, wind energy generators. And these are examples of uh, renewable energy. And that's what we're, one of the things we're gonna be discussing today. All right, join me on the top of page 188. What are fuels? So we're gonna learn what fuels are. People, animals, and plants need food to live. They break down the food and use it as a source of energy. Fuel is also a source of energy. A fuel is a material that releases heat when it is burned, providing energy. There are many different kinds of fuels, including wood, oil, and coal. Fossil fuels. Some fuels come from fossils, the remains of ancient plants and animals known as fossil fuels. They are formed beneath the surface of earth. When plants and animals die, their remains become buried beneath layers of sand or mud. Over millions of years, the plant and animal remains sink deep into earth, where heat and pressure convert them into fuels such as coal, oil, and natural gas. Fossil fuels, sometimes called stored sunlight, give off large amounts of heat when they burn, so they are widely used. Renewable and non-renewable resources. So now I'm on page 189 if you uh, got lost. Because fossil fuels take millions of years to form, they are non-renewable resources. So if we run out of them, the next time they would be available would be millions of years from now to us, so we would be dead. So that's why they're considered non-renewable. It takes too long for them to form again. So if we run out, we're out. Resources that cannot be replaced within a short period of time or at all. Coal, oil, and natural gas are examples of non-renewable resources. Other sources of energy are known as renewable resources. These can be replaced in a relatively short time. This means that we can use these resources without using them up or running out of them. Wood, water, wind, and solar energy are renewable resources if they are not used up too quickly. So wood is an example of one that can be, um, can be kind of both depending on if we, how quickly we use it up. It does take some time to obviously grow another tree, but if we don't use it up too quickly, it, uh, we can replace those trees and grow more trees. We just have to be careful not using it up too quickly. But wind, wind is always going to be blowing. Solar energy, uh, in our lifetimes, the sun will always be shining uh, unless, you know, some kind of catastrophic event happens. But uh, that's highly, highly unlikely, obviously. So they're considered renewable because we can, the sun will always come up, the wind will always blow. Okay, continuing in your text. Another source of renewable fuels is biomass conversion, a method for changing plant and animal materials into high quality fuels. Materials used for biomass conversion include straw, manure, sugarcane, corn, animal fats, and vegetable oils. For example, the sugar in corn can be turned into ethanol, a fuel that can be mixed with gasoline to run cars. Another method uses bacteria to digest garbage buried in landfills. As the bacteria digest the garbage, they give off methane gas, which is the main ingredient in natural gas. Okay, and uh, manure is what a lot of the uh, people coming across the United States would use as they came out west. Um, because the you know they would find these cow patties or buffalo patties, buffalo poop and cow poop, dried out, and they they were actually used for fuel. Because in the Great Plains, there's not a lot of trees, but there are a lot of, in the, or there was a lot of buffalo patties, things like that. So they could gather these 
uh, the, this manure, this hardened, dried manure for, uh, that had been dried out and burn it for their fires. Okay, turning the page, I'm on page 190. What happens when fuel burns? When a fuel such as coal, wood, or gasoline burns, energy is released. Burning is a chemical reaction, a change in matter that produces new substances with different properties from the original substances. The original substances in the reaction are called reactants. The new substances formed are called products. So it's kind of like chemical reactions are very similar to math equations. And they use some of the same terms. The product is what you get as the answer, essentially. So as you go through school and you start getting deeper into science and chemistry, when they, do, when they have a chemical reaction, it's set up very similar to a math problem. Okay, where you have um, your reactants on one side and then products are what is the result of the chemical reaction. Okay. Continuing in your text, oxygen must be present for any fuel to burn. When a fuel is heated, it reacts with the oxygen in the air around it. This chemical reaction between the oxygen and the fuel releases heat energy and light energy. It also releases products such as water vapor and carbon dioxide, which contain little energy. So that's why, uh, you know, we think of things that can uh, stop us from breathing. Those are the same things that can put out a fire. Water, for example, firemen use water and they're essentially suffocating the fire. The fire needs oxygen to burn and by dousing it with water, just like we can't breathe underwater, the fire can't breathe. They also use sand, same thing. If we're buried alive, we can't breathe. Same thing with the fire. If you put sand, enough sand over a fire, it will put the fire out. Okay, looking at the bottom of page 190, this is the diagram that you're going to use uh, to answer one of the questions in your science today. So the first step, methane gas, methane gas it, that is burned for fuel, it requires oxygen and energy to burn. Methane is made up of carbon and hydrogen. So if you're putting in that, that in your own words, you would say uh, methane is burned, methane is made up of carbon and hydrogen and it's burned. Number two, oxygen is necessary for a fuel such as methane to burn. So uh, carbon and hydrogen make up methane. <coughs> Combined with oxygen, it will burn. Three, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is one of the products given off when methane is burned. As the methane burns, the carbon in the methane combines with oxygen in the air to make carbon dioxide. So here we have carbon and hydrogen in the methane. It gets burned, which requires oxygen. So now oxygen is one of the reactants. And when those three mix, you have the um, carbon combining with that oxygen. So carbon, that's where the carbon from carbon dioxide comes. Dioxide meaning two oxygen molecules. Okay, number four, heat. Burning methane gives off a lot of heat and that can be changed into electricity or other forms of energy. So when we burn that, get that we can uh, turn it, oftentimes it's um, turned into heat as it is on the stove. So if you have a gas burner at home, you're turning the, the burning of methane into heat energy to heat up your food. Number five, water vapor. Water vapor is another product given off by burning methane. The hydrogen and methane com combines with oxygen in the air to make water. And remember, the makeup of water is H2O, hydrogen, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. So the hydrogen and the oxygen combine, and that makes water vapor. The carbon and the oxygen combine, 
and that makes the carbon dioxide. Okay, looking at 191, turning the page, burning fuel for energy. Fuels such as coal and petroleum release large amounts of heat energy when they burn. They are a major source of energy used in cars, homes, and businesses. Burning fuels may also release light energy. Candles and kerosene lamps give off light that can brighten a room. The light energy released when fireworks explode is used to entertain people on the 4th of July and other celebrations. All right, thanks for following along, and I'll see you on the next one. Continue on your science uh, assignment for today.